today we're going to talk about analysing a visual image and more specifically how do we write about it. So I'm going to read you this sample and then we're going to look at what's really working well for this piece of writing and what sort of things would we need to tighten up as a writer. So I'll read it to you. Corroborating the above is a visual text titled An Aboriginal Sitting Down on an English Settler's Farm by Augustus Earle, British travel artist. Prior to examining this image, the idea of terra nullius and the removal of the indigenous identity can be seen in the title where it states English Settler's Farm, meaning the British have claimed this land as theirs. The use of watercolour in the image appears more immediate and lively in comparison with the depth of an oil painting. This is used to make the audience aware that the meaning of the image is true and is reality. In the background of the image, the British are situated facing inwards in the direction of the Indigenous people, representing their prosperous, successful future and their fascination towards the Indigenous. In addition, they are surrounded by a large house signifying establishment and wealth, along with the trees being level with the British, representing their growth economically, socially and politically. Where the British are situated is considered the more ideal environment, as it is the lighter, more occupied part of the image. All three Aboriginals are facing away, slouched on the ground, demonstrating their lack of future and British control over their individualism. The fact that the British people are situated above the Indigenous validates their hierarchy, power and authority, as well as their curiosity. The Indigenous faces are undefined and all appear very alike, which suggests that their identities have been diminished due to British curiosity, and they are situated in the darker part of the image, representing their dull future. The Indigenous people occupying the majority of the painting also showing that they are a point of research and inquisitiveness. Augustus Earle's pictorial representation of the Indigenous and non-Indigenous illustrates the non-Indigenous condescending curiosity with the Indigenous Australians. Okay, I'd like you to pause now and think about what is going on in this piece of writing. Is it working particularly effectively so that the reader can understand what the image means? I'll just scroll down so you can see the whole thing. Okay, now that you're back, Look at what I've marked up here and how I'm going to analyse it because you may have found that there were things that were working well. I hope you identified some anomalies in the text where the beginning and the end don't quite match up, where she hasn't been consistent in her analysis, but also to see that she's actually picked out some of the significant uh, and important aspects of the text. So we'll go uh, through the text. I've highlighted it and it's highlighted in themes. In yellow here I'm looking specifically at the structuring of this particular response. So here she's made reference to a previous paragraph and she may have alluded to her thesis statement. It appears that she has because of the second sentence. So corroborating the above is her linking device, is the visual text titled An Aboriginal Sitting Down on an English Settler's Farm by Augustus Earle, British Travels Artist. Now this is effective because we do need to state who painted the painting and the name of it is important to analysing this particular text. What's interesting is that she doesn't talk about how being a travel artist and the background of Augustus Earl might influence what he's writing about and the pe or painting about in this case and what he's trying to say and for which audience which I think is an important part of this text. Prior to examining this image the idea of terra nullius and the removal of indigenous identity can be seen in the title. Now I think this removal of ide indigenous identity and the fact that she speaks about curiosity and inquisitiveness later in the text is part of her thesis, though this is not linked to curiosity and inquisitiveness. If you'll notice right down here at the end, this idea of curiosity is the central idea she comes to in the conclusion.
and there's the word inquisitiveness. And we would expect when we're listening to a text that that might appear up here in her opening statements. Now, when we go through the text in purple, we can see that she's done some analysis. I might make it a bit smaller so you can see the whole text there. So in purple is the analysis. So she talks about this critical theory of terra nullius. She doesn't explore it. She actually makes a statement about it and that reduces her ability to draw bigger conclusions about the text. She uses words like meaning, appears, um, it's used to, and representing is used quite consistently. The word demonstrating, signifying, validates, illustrates. They're all really great words for analysis. It means that throughout the text she's presented us with evidence from the text and she's drawn specific conclusions and you want to do that. I would advise this particular writer to try to be um, I guess more varied in her analysis. She uses very few linking devices apart from words like this she doesn't use, and in addition um, but she I would encourage her to use more linking devices throughout. In this aqua color here I've made reference to the parts of the text that she's made reference to so the title the fact that it is painted in watercolour, she's referenced the background, the surrounding aspects of the central figures, where it's situated, that it is above and below, that things are undefined and something's situated in the dark part and reference to the majority. When writing about a painting, this aqua colour should be more consistent because you are specifically referring to what's happening in the text. So I would expect specific references all the way through. There are some broader references, but when she's speaking about where things are relative to each other in the text, she has been quite broad. Lastly, um, I've tried to highlight for you in bold some questions that need to be broadened or explored more. So if we look at the second sentence here, prior to examining this image, the ideas of terra nullius and the removal of the indigenous identity can be seen in the title where it states English settlers farm, meaning the British have claimed this land as theirs. How does the title relate to this claiming and how does it relate to identity? We would be looking for a closer link in what you're stating and the conclusion that you are drawing. If I jump down to this part and this sentence, this is used to make the audience aware that the meaning of the image is true and is reality. And I would wonder when I'm listening to this analysis, what are we talking about? Oops, I spell a mistake. What are we talking about in terms of reality? What does real mean? Do we mean that now that the colonists have arrived, they've established themselves on the land, that the reality is British authority is superior um, and that there is a diminishing of the indigenous um, cultural background and how that is happening? because there's very little analysis of this central figure. For example, there's no reference to the smoke, the composition of the family, the dogs in the background. Um, if we jump here, just be very careful when you're analysing that you get the right words. Here she's got British are situated facing inwards, but in fact they're facing outwards. Uh, this idea of fascination, if the characters are in the background here and these characters are much larger, you need to link that idea of fascination. Is it the painter's fascination? Um, because it doesn't appear that these characters are necessarily fascinated with what's going on here. So be careful with your word choice or be careful of the clarity of your analysis and drawing conclusion. 
when you look at the sentence, be careful with pronoun references. Here it says, in addition, they. In this context, is they the indigenous or is it the colonists in the background? Because the ensuing analysis is not terribly specific until we get down to here. Uh, in this particular part, it says here, the British representing their growth economically, socially and politically. You need to show in this case how the trees represent economic, social and political growth. I can see that it is implied in the word growth, but you might want to look at it in contrast to the foreground here, for example. Where the British are situated is considered the more ideal environment as it is lighter. For us, analysing an image, that is a very common conclusion drawn, but we need to say why. Often the sky and the light in a Christian um, analysis might signify being closer to truth and God. So when you're drawing conclusions, make sure you establish here a bit more of a specific context, especially given that the colonists brought Christianity to this particular community. Uh, where the British are situated is considered the more ideal environment as it is lighter, more occupied part of the image. All three Aboriginals, now I can appreciate why she said Aboriginals even though grammatically it's not right, because up in the title uh, there is that um, reference here. I think it would be interesting to note that the title says an Aboriginal as opposed to the whole family and that might allude to this privileging of the male character in the image given that women were lower on the social hierarchy. It also might imply that they are considered um, even less human than the male character, especially if you're exploring representations of women as one of your questions. Uh, all three Aboriginals are facing away, it should be Aborigines, are facing away slouched on the ground, demonstrating their lack of future and two, considering that they are facing away, which she does, is important. Uh, here she mentions this ideology of individualism and I don't know that she meant individualism, I believe she means individuality, but one question as a listener we might have is why or how is individualism an issue? Because there is very little reference to it earlier on. Uh, in the last sentence, the fact that the British people are situated above the Indigenous validates their hierarchy. Now grammatically it's not validating their hierarchy, it is uh, I guess signifying their position in the hierarchy so that they are above the Indigenous, there are more of them therefore they have less value, their association with the animals in this particular context would also assert that. So there needs to be a clarity of expression and a greater clarity in what you mean by hierarchy. A bit further below she talks about British curiosity and again this idea of how is curiosity established in these characters needs to be more firmly established in what she says. She talks about the fact that the Indigenous family is in the dark. Now if her precision with the lighter um, characters of the colonists were, was clearer, that would make a lot more sense later on. So she might um, associate it with an afterlife that is for Christians associated with the devil and being in the dark. Uh, and that would be further your analysis of the Indigenous people. Um, and she wrote, does arrive here at a very clear conclusion. So if I look at her response, what I've highlighted here is that when you structure a paragraph or a section of your oral presentation that is in response to an image, the beginning and the end need to meet. You need to be very clear about what you're going to be showing about what this image represents relative to your thesis. Your ideas need to be clearly linked and you need to make sure that 
when you present an